What's up YouTube Fragrance family? Tommy with Studio Sense here with another video review and today we're going to be taking a look at 10 fragrances that are apples to oranges. Now apples to oranges is a saying that people usually employ when they're talking about someone using maybe an analogy that doesn't match up. Like you're talking about something completely different. That's apples to oranges. There's no comparison. Today though we're being a little bit literal. We're actually talking about five fragrances that are apple oriented and five fragrances that are orange oriented for the summertime. So we're talking about 10 fragrances that remind you or smell just like your favorite fruity, tangy, apple or orange oriented fragrance. So when we come back, we're gonna talk about literal apples to oranges fragrances to brighten and fruitify your summer, that and more, so stay tuned. Welcome back everyone. So today we're talking about 10 fragrances that remind you of the best aspects of summertime. You've got apple, which is sweet and tangy. You've got orange, which is bright, fruity, sunny, citric. Our first apple oriented fragrance also has orange in it. You get that apple a lot more, that red apple. It is from Tommy Hilfiger and it is Impact. If you happen to see the description of this video, I talk about apples sitting in a wood crate and kind of that mix of apples that have been sitting there for a while, like you're walking through an apple orchard and you're kind of getting the smell of apples that are a little bit older that have fallen off the tree. Mix that with that wood crate smell and that's what you get. Along with red apple, you've got pink pepper, you've got elemi resins, you've got other resins in here, some clary sage to give it some spice. In the base, you've got some akigala wood, you've got sandalwood, cedar, and cypress. That's why you get that crate, that wood crate sensation along with the apple. Just an overall really good apple oriented signature scent. Plus Hilfiger did something that's a little bit gimmicky but still very cool. They put a travel atomizer in the actual lid. Tommy Hilfiger Impact. When you think of orange fragrances, you don't think of this fragrance because orange is kind of a bit player or background player in the beginning. However, the more this fragrance dries down, the more mandarin orange essence that you get out of it. And I really enjoy it for that reason and more. It is a Hugo Boss fragrance called Hugo Boss Urban Journey. Well, it's interesting about Urban Journey. It opens with like a Himalayan whorl flower, which you don't really hear about a lot in fragrance. The heart is a mix of an aquatic cascalone and a little bit darker black tea. Rest on guaiac wood, sandalwood, and moss. Now the opening of this does have that whorl flower and that orange, but the orange actually stays active into the heart, into the base of this, which is unusual for a fragrance. There's something about the whorl flower that creates a more of an orange. I think it's that combination of the cascalone, which is very aquatic, the whorl flower, and the orange that gives the overall orange flavor in here, which, which dominates kind of a turbo boost. Very pleasant, very refreshing, and as such makes a great summertime orange-oriented companion. Hugo Boss Urban Journey. Next up on Apples to Oranges is another Hugo Boss fragrance, and you can probably guess which one this one is. It is Hugo Boss Bottled. Hugo Boss Bottled is often called Hugo Boss Number no. 6, but whichever name it goes by, it is the flagship pillar fragrance of Hugo Boss. The cinnamon, clove, and vanilla combination in this, along with other like rich wood, like mahogany, olive tree, sandalwood, um, there's also cedar in here, and then get a little bit of vetiver. This fragrance is a virtual cornucopia. There's apple, plum, bergamot, citrus fruits. Primarily though, that apple is what you get. So a combination of citrus fruits and apple make this a largely apple-oriented fragrance. It's warm, supple, inviting, masculine, and one for the ages, and that's why it makes a good signature scent. Boss Bottled by Hugo Boss. Next up is an orange-oriented fragrance from the House of Guerlain. It is discontinued. It is Loam Ideal Cologne. Loam Ideal Cologne is one of my favorite fragrances, and this is one of those that you pull out after not having used it for a while, and you spray it on, and you're like, man, why have I not used this more? Why don't I use it more often? It's such a creamy, almond, orange, dreamsicle of a fragrance. I just put this on right out of the shower the other day, and I was like, man, that is the perfect opportunity to use this fragrance. So if you haven't 
worn it fresh out of the shower, I highly recommend it. It's great to wake up to, it wakes up the senses, it's refreshing, it does what an orange-oriented fragrance should, and that lasts most of the day. I get a good seven to eight hours performance out of this fragrance, and that's really good for a citric or citrus-oriented orange fragrance. The combination of orange and almond are what make this fragrance, but you also have neroli, you've got grapefruit, you've got bergamot, Lome Ideal Cologne by Guerlain. If you like a nice, dark, rich, holiday festive kind of apple, then you're gonna really like this fragrance. It is Perry Ellis Bold Red. Bold Red is like a darker version of Hilfiger Impact. Primarily, this opens with a juicy, citrusy finger lime, and then you get your tangy, sweet red apple. In the heart is where you get some black pepper, some leaves that gives it kind of a green vibe, and some ginger flower. We've got mahogany wood, tonka bean, and musk in the base that adds the, the weight to it. It's like an apple surrounded by green leaves. The mahogany, musk, and black pepper are what gives Give this a weight and give it a little bit of maturity. So it's kind of a mature fragrance as well. Perry Ellis Bold Red. Weighing in on the orange side of apples and oranges is a surprisingly complex, very mature orange oriented fragrance from the house of Hermes called Terra d'Hermes Eau Très Fraiche. The purpose of Eau Très Fraiche, because Terra d'Hermes became so popular, they wanted an aquatic version, kind of an aquatic version. That's definitely what this is, but it also takes the top note of orange or mandarin and it pushes it and promotes it throughout the life of the fragrance. That's what, to me, makes Eau Très Fraiche a little bit different than your average fare. You've got the heavy hitting floral of geranium in the heart, you've got woody notes and some patchouli, vetiver in the base. All around just a little bit more sophisticated than your just your average fruity fragrance. If you're looking for a summertime fruity fragrance with some sophistication, in fact more sophistication than most others, Terre d'Hermes Eau Très Fraiche is exactly what you're looking for. Flipping back over to the apple side of things is a fairly new fragrance that I've actually grown to like quite a lot because of its apple-oriented subtleness. It is Alfred Dunhill Driven. It's a relatively diminutive fragrance, so it's not really a loud, out there, in your face kind of apple. To me, if you're looking for an app, a refreshing apple fragrance that you can dress up with and kind of carry off, you can successfully do so with Dunhill Driven. Uh, lime, plum, and bergamot are working with the apple in the open in here. You've got a nice cardamom and cinnamon, a little bit of jasmine and rose in the heart to give it some floral intelligence. Then you've got amber, amorous, vanilla, cedar, and musk in the base. Apple's more of a dumbed down casual summer scent, so it's nice to see it with a little bit of a tie on. If you were like me when you first put your foot forward on your fragrance journey and had to look up R-O-C-H-A-S, how to pronounce that, you probably ran across Eau de Rochas Homme. There's a lot of orange in here, but there's actually, it's usurped by a ton of lemon, lemon verbena, lemon zest, lemon vervain, there's aldehydes, there's basil, a ton of floral notes in here that you would think it would be a feminine fragrance. There's like freesia, carnation, jasmine, lily of the valley, rose, violet, there's vetiver, cedar, amber, and musk in the base. So there's a ton of notes in this. This was an early 90s fragrance, but it doesn't smell that way. It is one of the more fresh and refreshing lemon orange and lemon oriented fragrances. Again, you get primarily, you get that lemon, but it does carry a very nice, rich, masculine, mandarin orange vibe. So while yes, it's more on the lemon side than orange, we can still include it in this whole citrus head to head against apples to oranges. Eau de Rochas Am. Picking the last apple out of the bottom of the barrel, and I actually saved the best for last, it's probably gonna surprise you, is a Versace fragrance that you don't think of apple when you think of this fragrance, probably. It is Versace Eros, the Eau de Parfum. If you didn't know it, there is a candied apple note in this. Have you ever gone to a carnival or a fair when you were a kid and you had a caramel covered apple? Remember that kind of sweet, caramelized, tangy flavor? You could encapsulate that and make it an olfactive experience that's what Eros EDP is like. But conversely, is it's also got mandarin orange in the open. So you have Italian lemon, you've got mandarin orange, and then you've got that candied apple in the heart. Not that this was a competition or a top 10, but if it were, this would to me stand above all the rest for complementing one another and having apples to oranges built into the DNA that is still extremely affordable from a wonderful designer house like Versace. 
Our final orange fragrance is Mandarin Fresh by Reminiscence. A Reminiscence, you might remember, is the house that released patchouli, which is in the same bottle as this, that kind of put the house on the map. This has a really, really nice, if you, if you can say, an orange punch, because it's not really aggro, it's more um, soft, softer than that. Oh man, so such a great, it's extremely citrusy, but it's a really nice softer side of things. It's not like, you know how zesty is very bright, almost fizzing-like? It's so bright. This is uh, more of a muted orange with bokeh, you know, a bokeh effect on it. That's kind of what this is like. But again, like most of these, the, the mandarin in this is buoyed by some, there's some pink berries, some lime zest. You've got verbena, white tea, a little bit of orris, and some white musk as well. You could literally spray the entire bottle, spray down your whole body and, you know, walk into a room and someone will be like, you smell great and they won't be like choking out because it's not cloying or heavy. It's just a really nice orange oriented fragrance overall. Let me know what your favorites are. List in the comments below what are some of your favorite orange or apple fragrances. And if there's some that I've already mentioned, let me know what your experience with those has been like as well. Guys, thanks so much for stopping by and checking out today's 10 apple to oranges summertime fragrances. I truly appreciate you checking out today's video. And as always, thank you so much for your support on my channel. I'm Tommy with StudioSense and I'll see you tomorrow.